they marched in sadness and in anger. For the second day running, a funeral procession for a protester killed by police on this small island in the Gulf. 31-year-old Fadl Salman Matruk was shot dead exactly 24 hours earlier. Thousands gathered to demand justice, reform and a redistribution of power and wealth, which they say is nearly all in the hands of the royal family. The King family, they are covered all the ministries, okay? They are covered my uh, Prime Minister, Prime Minister Che is over 40 years, he's in the same. There is no freedom in Hibari. There is no freedom, no democracy. And there is torture, and there is prisoners, and there is, the, the parliament is not straight. The anger and the demands of the people are growing. And one opposition politician, a member of the predominantly Shia Al Wafaq party, says events are no longer in the hands of the political class. The government is not the main player, and the uh, political parties are not the main player, and the Department of State is not the main player. People here are the main player. They decide uh, their slogans. They decide the, they decide the limits of their demands here. Some of those demands are extreme. Death to the Khalifas, they shout. The Al Khalifa royal family have ruled this island for more than 200 years. These protesters say they're no longer taking the country in the right direction. But the views on exactly what people now want vary widely. Some say they'd be happy with constitutional reform bringing more democracy. Protesters continue to gather at a central city location, the Pearl Roundabout. They've learned from protesters in Egypt and now want to make this the focal point of the uprising, Bahrain's version of Tahrir Square. It's become a tented city, with many of the young activists saying they will not move until they get what they want. Al Jazeera, Bahrain.